Ahonyat A, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sean Clen Shadow Productions. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys asking questions about the stories that I've told in my previous videos, and I'm here to answer some of those questions that I have. So, one of the number one comments I always get is swords. What kind of swords do you use? What kind of weapons do you use to be able to protect yourself against the Yanagloshi? Well, I'm here to answer some of those questions here for you. Um, but before I go ahead and do that, let me go ahead and take you back. So where the story of the swords came from, no, traditionally swords were not used in Native American culture uh, until later outside sources came to the lands to introduce iron and metal to us indigenous people. Indigenous people don't go and try to harvest the land or use its ores and metals to be able to make weapons like this. We would usually use like normal stones, obsidian to be able to make arrowheads. And if you go more down south, they use this obsidian a lot in the Aztec culture to be able to make their weapons for warfare against each other. And for soon people that came from overseas. So now when it comes to the weapons that we use, uh, this goes back to our trainings early on when we were asked, what kind of weapon do you want to specialize to be able to go against the darkness? And we're like, weapon? So you can use weapons to go against spirits and kill them if necessary? So yes. So how my brother used to tell it is they would present a table full of weapons so you would choose your speciality. And each weapon has its own stories. And this goes to... What it talks about how we chose our swords and a lot of you guessed it right on the comments katanas so the katanas that we use here are very very awesome blades and i don't know if you'll be able to see that up close but these things have been used over the past couple years or so so with this these blades the story goes and you can actually find some cave drawings over in california of what we call beetle warriors that came from the seas so a long time ago there were some warriors that came on a ship who you came to trade with us and jesus people who are said to have armor that covered them from head to toe and in some of these cave drawings i'll show you some photos here you can clearly see that they have what looks like to be beetle helmets that's why they hence called them beetle warriors because essentially beetles have really hard exoskeletons so they can be able to protect themselves against predators but in some of these drawings you see them hold blades you see them hold weapons and they traded some of these weapons with the indigenous people and they call these the crescent moon blades uh, basically with the curvature of the blade and how it shines in the sky and even in the nighttime too it shines like the moon it shines brightly and powerful so some of these weapons were actually used by indigenous people now throughout time they have kind of gotten lost and here's a couple of pictures i found online i'm not too sure if they're real or not it would be pretty cool if they are That right there is one of our main weapons that we use to go against darkness, to go against evil. Now, one of my weapons of speciality, and more traditionally for us indigenous people, is the bow and arrow. Now, what makes this weapon so awesome, I guess you could say, is how it's designed and made. Traditionally, in the Navajo culture and with other tribes, they have these designs that they put on the shaft they bless these weapons as well as the feathers that go on here. All these all tie into the protective abilities of these weapons and to be able to pierce into the spirit realm. Now, when it comes to the katana, a lot of people say is silver is your weapon. Silver, I get the hint like the Witcher Wild Hunt, you know, you get to use a silver sword to kill off certain type of beings. But no, this is clearly plain uh, steel, carbon steel, and to be able to make literally any weapon into uh, a weapon that can pierce into the spirit world, you need something extra. And for a lot of people out there that were saying, oh yeah, well, why don't, why don't you get like a gun or something like that? Typically, a normal gun with normal bullets will not be able to bring down, say, a skinwalker. 
if you shoot a skinwalker with it it's just going to go right through it because it's more of a sense when it's in that form it's more of a spiritual being so one thing to be able to combat that as well as protect yourself is this ash ish so this is some of the ash that i would mention to some of you guys in the comments to where you start a fire and you begin a holy prayer with it and you give an offering and then you pray with it and you let the fire burn out and you can use pretty much any wood uh to be able to gather some of this ash for yourself and with this ash you're able to put it on your forehead your chest your heart and your extremities as well to be able to kind of put a little, little bit layer of protection against any spiritual being that wants to do harm to you now when it comes to these arrows and other traditionally made weapons from our peoples you don't need ash because these symbols that are on here make it so to where you can pierce the spiritual realm if if need be so a lot of different tribes have their own herbs and medicines that they put on their weapons to be able to protect themselves and so that goes into the, another aspect of what I was talking about in my very first video to be able to protect yourself. If you do run into a skinwalker ash, I know a lot of you probably won't be able to have katanas on you, um, but ash definitely, uh, whenever we go to an area that is highly negative, so a lot of you in the comments saying, how do I protect myself if I'm gonna go into the Navajo Nation, say I'm a tourist, I'm traveling, and you wanna be able to unfortunately protect yourself against the evil and the dark arts out there you get some ash with these uh things that i'm telling you these are just from the Diné point of view uh the navajo point of view so other tribes like how i mentioned before and other religions have their protections now the thing i love about ash and tish is when i spoke with somebody uh about its qualities of getting against all beings and all deities the act of starting a fire having a fire go is a very spiritual event that happens so when the fire turns into a solid it burns and then the smoke goes up into the air and in our teachings when that smoke goes up into the air and it disappears it's said to have gone into the spirit world so if you ever meet us in in person tobacco is a very very huge part with our Diné culture and um, we have a lot of stories in our ceremonies too when you partake of tobacco, the smoke goes inside you, and when it comes out, sometimes you're not able to word your prayer how you need it to, so the smoke, it goes inside of you. And when it comes out and then it disappears into the air, it goes into the spirit world and it knows you, it sees you, everything that's inside of you, and it takes it into the spirit world for you. Um, so with that, a lot of different spiritual things happen, so that's why ash is very protective. It brings you warmth, it cooks you food, it keeps you protected at night from predators. So there's a lot of different stories and teachings that go behind this. There's a lot of natural based elements that go with it. So this is essentially indigenous holy water for us, <laughs> I guess you can say. So um, it's one of the very first elements that you can find in uh, the creation of this world. So that's how far back you can go and when one thing i want to point out is when you're dealing with darker entities you're dealing with darker beings you have to know how old they are because sometimes what we've come to find out if you use more i guess you could say recent religions or recent uh, remedies that just kind of came up or laws or bylaws a lot of times that's not going to work because that being is older than that protection that being is a lot older than a lot of those things so it's not i guess you can say gonna listen to what those natural remedies uh particularly do so that's why we always resort to this because fire has always been on this earth since its very creation with these weapons these are the ones in the stories that i mentioned we would be taken out to be able to go against these dark beings the yanagloshi and other dark deities and other dark beings which leads me to my next story. So this story I'm gonna be going into is, I guess you can say one of the first confrontations we had with skinwalkers and Yanagloshis. I remember this night we were getting ready and immediately in this homestead, the dogs that were at the sheep corral, I would have to say about 300 yards away from the home inside of a canyon started barking. I turned to look toward the direction of the sheep corral and I remember seeing 
these red dots kind of glowing in the darkness up in the canyon 